I'm Monica Yoon, and I'm a constitutional fellow at the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU Law School. Well, in theory, the decision comes down to uh, two competing notions of the First Amendment. And I think that the Supreme Court articulated, I think, a very simple and in some ways a very charismatic vision that the First Amendment is about, in some ways, monologue, is about if you have the ability and means and wherewithal to speak and to broadcast your message as widely and as loudly as possible, then the First Amendment is about uh, removing any limits on that kind of a monologue. Um, I think that a competing vision that the Supreme Court had been open to over the past multiple decades that it's been uh, thinking about these issues is that the First Amendment is about dialogue and that the purpose of democracy in some way is to inculcate dialogue and that that at least is a competing constitutional vision that should be given some weight and that is equally involved with what we think of as First Amendment values. Um, so the Bennett case in Arizona uh, was a case involving a public financing system. And so you had uh, private parties who could spend as much as they, private candidates who could spend as much as they want, who didn't choose to opt into the public financing system, and you had publicly financed candidates. Now the question was, what happens if a publicly financed candidate is in a race against a privately financed candidate? And you know the state tried to budget in advance for its public financing candidates, trying to make sure that they were, you know, had enough money to make them competitive. But what happens if that race is particularly a hot race? What happens if all of a sudden, rather than you know, a few, you know, tens of thousands of dollars being spent on that race, hundreds of thousands of dollars are suddenly being spent on this race, and the publicly financed candidate is limited by the amount of grant money that, uh, that she receives. Uh, should you be able to give the um, publicly financed candidate additional grant money up till a certain level to make sure that the race is competitive and that the voters hear both sides of the issues? And the Supreme Court said no. Uh, somehow providing additional publicly financed funds to the publicly financed candidates was treated as a restriction of the, uh, a violation of the privately financed candidates' rights. Like somehow giving someone the money to respond to spending was considered to be a violation of the rights of the spenders. And I think even a lot of people who were on board with Citizens United and, you know, well, if there's a direct restriction on the amount or the amount that a corporation can spend or the way a corporation can spend, that's a First Amendment problem. Even people who were on board with that thought that Bennett took it way too far. Um, people like Charles Freed, who was, uh, you know, a former or Solicitor General and uh, for the Republicans that just thought, what you know, what are we even talking about here? The whole level the playing field analogy is not something that advocates of reform have ever really supported. Um, I think that it's this kind of uh, boogeyman that the conservatives have come up with as to what they think that uh, campaign finance reform is trying to achieve. It's kind of like trying to talk about health reform and using only the broccoli metaphor. The apt metaphor is should the amount of money that goes into a, um, an election campaign be somehow related to the voluntary decisions of individuals. Um, like it never, you know, so Exxon PAC uh, was always going to be bigger than, you know, tiny mom and pop corporation PAC. Uh, you know, tiny mom and pop corporation PAC was going to be able to spend, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Exxon PAC was going to be able to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that wasn't a problem because Exxon PAC was funded by shareholders and employees of Exxon who decided voluntarily that they wanted their money to go into a fund for political advocacy. Uh, the problem is when you have these vast sums of money that have nothing to do with the voluntary decisions of individuals, 
to devote that money to political spending. And those are being used to, um, those are being kind of channeled into the political system in a way that has very little to do with the decisions of individuals. Um, the metaphor that was used in Austin, which was uh, one of the precedents struck down by Citizens United was not a level the playing field metaphor. It wasn't saying everyone only gets the same amount of money and it's a problem if anyone has more money or speaks louder than anyone else. The analogy that was used in Austin was a barometer analogy, was the idea that the amount of money that's supporting these ideas should have some relationship to how popular these ideas are, to um, to the decisions of individuals rather than the decisions of these corporate directors who are, you know, dealing with other people's 401k funds to advance their own political agendas. The barometer means that there should be some relationship between the amount of money spent on behalf of a candidate or idea and the voluntary decisions of individuals. Like no one complained in uh, the previous elections, you know, for example, in the 2008 election cycle that Barack Obama was able to had a lot more money to spend than Dennis Kucinich because people were giving Obama money because they liked him and fewer people were giving Kucinich money because they didn't like him as much. Um, and so the idea that Obama has more money because millions of people support him, you know, is not at all a problem. The problem is when you have a couple of people or some interest group or some individual who have a disproportionate amount of money compared to the actual support of their idea, but because they have a disproportionate amount of money, they're able to have an outsized influence on political dialogue. So what Citizen, the way Citizens United changes and you know gets rid of this whole barometer analogy is you know we had talked about Exxon Mobil. So in the previous elections, Exxon Mobil, if they uh, if they wanted to influence elections, they would say, hey, let's form a PAC, and they would go around to their shareholders and officers and um, and say. Um, you know, we want to support the Exxon Mobil agenda in politics, and we want to do so by, you know, by trying to influence the outcome of an election. So anybody who's on board with that, let's give money. You know, let's give individual donations. And you know, Exxon Mobil, in fact, did that in uh, the 2008 election, and I think they raised, you know, something like eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars. I mean, some totally respectable amount of money, um, certainly much more than uh, many smaller PACs would have been able to raise. Um, but after Citizens United, the amount of money that ExxonMobil is able potentially to access in order to, uh, uh, in order to advance its political agenda is no longer that eight or nine hundred thousand dollars that's voluntarily given. Um, it is instead the 40 million or 40 billion or 80 billion dollars uh, available to it in uh, corporate profits uh, that are just available in its general treasury. They no longer have to have any kind of, you know, let's tie this to individuals, let's talk about popular support, let's drum up support the way anyone else does. They can simply take advantage of funds that were used, you know, that were given to them for corporate business purposes uh, in order to outcome, in, in order to influence political uh, decisions. Uh, Citizens United, you know, people like to talk about Citizens United a lot because it's very recent and very famous. Uh, Citizens United was by no means the beginning of this problem and um, it's not going to be the end of this problem. Uh, I think a lot of people focus on Citizens United in particular because it uh, involves corporations and a lot of progressives like to think of 
corporations as the man, you know, the big evil. And, you know, there are lots of different types of corporations, uh, just as there are lots of different types of individuals. Um, individuals have always been able to spend as much as they want in independent advocacy, as long as they're not giving it directly to the candidate. They can run as many ads as they want, saying, you know, I really want you to support this person. Um, what Citizens United did was give that same unlimited spending power um, for independent advocacy to corporations. Uh, corporations, whether they be nonprofit corporations, for profit corporations, whatever. And I think it used to be relatively difficult for an individual to say, I, as an individual, am going to run, you know, millions of dollars in attack ads um, against a particular candidate. It just, you know, was too complicated to do as an individual rather than as some sort of corporate entity. And uh, so it has, you know, in some ways opened the door to that. McCutcheon involves a lot that's been on the books for almost 50 years, and um, it has to do with the amount that individuals can contribute. Now, Citizens United is in a different realm of spending. Citizens United is about independent expenditures. McCutcheon has to do with contributions. Uh, independent expenditures are unregulated money, are unlimited, what used to be called soft money. Mm -hmm. But McCutcheon has to do with direct contributions to candidates and how much any individual is allowed to give in the aggregate. And it used to be, you know, I think that the aggregate limits that are involved in McCutcheon reflect a principle that no one person should have too much political influence. That is fundamentally at odds with what we think of a democracy being. I mean, you should not be able to give um, the maximum amount to every single candidate, every leadership pack, every you know, every organization, um, you know, every every party organization, because then you would be able to become the sort of money power player that uh, that we are uncomfortable having, especially in the realm of direct contributions given to candidates and parties.